So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory. Today, I'm privileged to be at the Smithtown Town Hall interviewing Supervisor Pat Vecchio. Uh, Supervisor Vecchio, uh, of course, many of you know, has been a long-standing supervisor of Smithtown, but he also holds the record of being the longest-standing supervisor in New York, uh, New York State uh, history. So uh, I don't want to talk too much because I want to talk about Supervisor Vecchio, what made him so successful, why he keeps getting reelected. But before I start, I just want to tell a personal story, how I got to know uh, the supervisor was a few years ago when I ran for office. Um, I wasn't too much involved in, in local politics, and I was actually running against somebody that the supervisor has a relationship with and I know was fond of. And, of course, the supervisor at the time knew that I had no shot in hell of winning this race. I didn't know. I was naive. But yet he still treated me with, with the utmost of respect. I sat next to him at uh, one of the debates, and he was not only respectful to me and helpful, but to everybody else, and, and encouraging in, in a nice way, even as I said, knowing that I had no shot of winning. And, and I really gave him a lot of credit. And since then, I've got to know the supervisor better. And he's really just a, a genuine person who is out to help everybody. I found him to be extremely accessible, even though we have so many people in the town that are constantly reaching out. And this man will take anybody's call who calls with, with a problem. It's, it's really, it's unbelievable the amount uh, the amount of time that he puts into this job and the devotion. So, Supervisor Vecchio, welcome, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, for, for us to start off, tell us, who, who is uh, Supervisor Vecchio? I mean, you have a picture on the wall with President uh, Kennedy. Tell us how you got involved in, 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 in politics. Wow, that's a <laughs> pretty tough question. <laughs> um, uh, when I left the police department, I went to work for a political consultant. So you were in the New York City Police Department? Yes. Okay. And. Uh, when that was over, I went to work for a political consultant who had been the political consultant to Mayor John Lindsay, for whom I worked. And um, so I went to work for the political consultant, and during that time, he was the consultant for Hugh Carey, who later became governor. And so um, I had some notoriety in doing that, and uh, the Democratic Party in Smithtown came to me and said, hey, would you like to run for supervisor? And never having run for office, but having been with people who did, it was an interesting uh, concept. Of course, I said yes, not knowing what a supervisor is or what a supervisor does, really. And so I guess I did it more to uh, see what it's like to run myself, having been with people who did run for election, mayors, governors, etc., And I said yes, um, not knowing what this job would entail. Right. Now, I, did you look at yourself as a politician? Because I look at you as people say, oh, he's just a regular guy. But I think you're a shrewd politician. You've been in office for so That's long. Right. You know, so do you consider yourself a politician? I mean, it's sort of a bad word when people say a politician. Do you consider yourself a politician? Uh, yes, in the sense that I think that politics is, uh, somebody wants to find it as the art of government. And I think as a politician, as a supervisor, I think I do well at it. And, um, and I think that answers your question as to why I'm here so long. Right. Yeah, because, you know, when I came out, I came out from, I lived in Huntington, and I was looking for a place to live. And I had a, a brother and sister-in-law sister who lived in Smithtown, uh, Doug and Chris Peters, who I respected a lot. And I said, we were looking at houses out here, and I said, you know what, it's just too far out. Why the hell do I want to go out to Smithtown? The right. traffic is sure. horrible. Coming from Huntington, this seemed like another world. Right. Right. And he said, oh, we have a great town. It, it's clean. We have a lot of parks. We have a nice downtown. It's just a safe town. My kids love the schools. And really, you, you have to take credit because you've been the only person who, who's been in office. How do you, so many of the towns have problems. And I think the biggest thing is corruption on all these towns. But yet you have no scandals with yourself in, in Smithtown. How do you, well, how do, you do this? Well, I think, first of all, the public, the people make the town a great place to begin with. Well, I, I, I have a question about that because the question is, people, people have said to me, well, of course Smithtown's good. People make a lot of money. You don't have a lot of low-income housing. You don't have a lot of crime. Right. It's easy to do a good job, but the question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Do people come to Smithtown because it's such a great town and it's clean or vice versa? 
I, I think for, for all those reasons you stated, <coughs> Smithtown, great schools, great library system, and I think a great government. If you notice uh, all the things we've achieved over these years, we have the best snow removal, I think, in New York State, and we were claimed for that. Um, our parks and beaches are wonderful, and it takes a lot of people to make them wonderful. So we have very good department heads and very good employees. Now, one thing I think it really stuck in my mind after actually sitting next to you in one of the debates, and people were talking about the taxes, how the taxes are so high on Long Island, they're pushing us out. And you made, the, you made a statement that actually the taxes in Smithtown are lower than most towns because a lot of our taxes are school taxes, yes. which you have no control over. Yes. But you, you're very fiscally conservative. And, I, and I'd like you to comment on the taxes in Smithtown and are they lower than most towns? And well, I can't, I can't say whether they're lower than most towns, but since I've been here, I have strived to keep the taxes on the town side stable. And so, for example, this year, while other towns were raising taxes, we had actually had a tax decrease. That's for 2017. Which people may not realize because if the school tax goes yes, up, your yes. bill goes up. But, they, you know, the tax bills now are somewhat um, educational because there are percentages, and they will see that the percentage on the town side uh, doesn't go up very much. If people look at the bill really good, well, they will see what their town taxes cost them. I just read mine. I pay seven hundred and thirty-two dollars for town services. I mean, you can't that's, get a better bargain. Well, that's that's what. In fact, you made that's what the comment that caught my attention when you said that at the band. I said, you know what? I'm thinking. Oh, my taxes are twelve thousand right. dollars. That's all I think of. Twelve thousand. What the hell am I getting for twelve thousand dollars? But when you broke it down, like you say, seven hundred dollars, a thousand. We're getting a lot for seven hundred dollars. Absolutely. It's it's incredible I, I believe, when you think about yeah, it. And I want to know that. With the recent advent of the new highway superintendent, I see the streets are cleaner, less litter, um, and they're being paid attention to by the new highway superintendent. I guess you can say that <coughs> if you're in, the, in the, the leadership role, you lead by example. And, you know, for example, I always say, if I ask my secretary for a pen, a pen, she brings me one pen. So it's kind of um, rippled down. One has to be conservative in spending and how we spend the people's money. Right. And what about debt? I mean, the uh, Suffolk County is, is, in a, is in a lot of debt. I, I don't we, even know where Smithtown is as I far as debt. I believe we have the lowest debt of any municipality in Suffolk and Nassau County. Wow. And that, and that keeps, is that staying steady? Or are we getting, because now with the tax cap, does that, does that cause problems <laughs> with the 2% well, tax yes, cap? Well, last year or two, um, we, did, we have done a little more borrowing than usual, and the reason for that is attempting to spread the, co spread, spread the cost, of that, cost of that borrowing over 20 years. Right. So it would not have the impact on the taxes. And what's the reason for that? You cited it. We have a tax cap. Right. So, you, so for example, a perfect example would be if you have to buy a bulldozer of 250,000 bucks and you buy it out of the general tax revenue, that has a large impact. So it's better to capitalize that, spread the cost of that over 15 or 20 years. Right. So where, where do you see Smithtown going in the next, say, 5, 10, 15, 15 years? Where well, do you, you know, see that's our a town? question that's always been asked of me every year that I've been here. I think you um, have to look at what, how it's um, progressed over these many years. It's been steady and slow and not over uh, overburdened with taxes and things that we should not be doing. Other towns have IAD, uh, IDAs. Industrial or, Development Associations. Industrial Associ well, we don't have any of that. I view those things as uh, great patronage pools, mm -hmm. and that's what those are. Right. So as far as the, the downtown, because I think we all see the ho our homes look good. As you said, the roads look good. We have beautiful <laughs> parks. But one of the things that people comment on is the downtown, that some of the some downtowns that we see in other areas are really revitalized as bars, as clubs. Yeah. But Smithtown downtown, we have some great things, but there's also some, some empty stores. Yes. And, and I've heard you comment on that. Some things are out of your control, but people don't like to see empty stores. I don't think we like to see gold buying stores where people can sell Good jewelry I for agree, drugs. So but, you know, uh, I, somebody said it, and I think it might have been you, 
that you know this is America. I, I did say that's why I brought it up because we're I thought a, your answer was great. We're in a capitalist society, and so the people who own the buildings and the stores, they desire to rent them, they will. They want to lower their rentals, they'll fill the stores. But government has no role in that. Now, but you did hit on something. I think towns can be revitalized with the implementation of sewers. Now, the public really doesn't know there's a, an article in the uh, Board of Health, Re the Department of Health Regulations, called Article 7 or 6, I'm not sure which one, which controls the amount of sewage that it can be generated by a commercial building. And so it's very difficult for uh, a building owner who has a store to rent it to, to somebody who wants to build a restaurant because the sewage capacity is not there. It's cesspools or other kind of uh, septic waste. I think it's going to be therapeutic in that you'll, when the sewers arrive and you'll see these uh, buildings along main streets hook up, you'll see the stores now will be no longer empty. They will be used. And what time frame are we looking at for this? Are we, is it, is it in my lifetime? Say we have no, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe your lifetime, maybe, <laughs> maybe not mine. I mean, this is a long, I mean, it sounds like a huge project. Yes, I will take years. Right. I can't say how many years. But the, now the $40 million, obviously a lot, I would think most of this is labor. The cost of this is, I mean, there's pipes involved. Well, you believe it or not, in almost everything you do, there's money. For example, we build an animal shelter. We're going to build one. There's a lot of money which we allocate. A lot of that money goes to the design and the engineering. Right. And I suspect a lot of that money will go to engineering firms and design firms as to how this sewer system is implemented. Right. So who builds a sewer system? Because I guess there'll be a sewer district set up for this? Yes, it, absolutely. And is that a town sewer district or? Well, I'm not sure yet. It could be the county sewer district. Or for, for example, in Kings Park, it will be an extension of a current sewer district there. Okay. We do have a sewer district, believe it or not, uh, Charter Oaks and Kings Park, if you know that development. Okay. That's hooked up to sewers. Right. And that goes into the sewage treatment plant. So that's a sewer, that would be considered one sewer district? Yes. And then we're going to have a set, so we'll have, there'll be two well, sewer in, districts? No, in, in Kings Park, the county will probably connect to the current sewer district rather okay. than creating a new one. Well, we'll have a new one for the, the Smithtown, Smithtown downtown? Yes, yes. So I, I have a stupid question. How do you deter... Does it have to run downhill? Is there, uh, can well, sewage I, go up? Can it go down? I mean, it, I'm pretty good at a lot of things, but I'm not an okay, engineer. Okay, so it wasn't a stupid question. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> so, because I was wondering if this, you know, how do we get it, uh, you know, this, the well, sewage no, yeah. up, can we get it up no, to wait, Kings wait, Park wait, or does wait. it have to go east? Well, first of all, there's no more, there's not enough um, capacity. capacity left in Kings Park. I would imagine that sewers have to go, go up, and if they don't, meaning the flow has to go upwards. There's pumping stations along the route okay. that will make it go up. Okay, well, that, that, that makes sense, too. Uh, so, is, so what's the next step now? So now we're the, the governor is committed to the money. What's the next step? Is the next step finding a place to put in, putting together this, working with the county to put together yeah, a, a sewer district? Well, yes. I think if um, once, once the money is allocated, we'd have to spend it on design and engineering. Right. And the determination as to where is the best place for sewage treatment plants, etc. Right, because what I was getting who, as far as building it, would this, this bring jobs you to see, that's, that's Smithtown? The, see, that's the uh, the conundrum. When we mentioned sewers, everybody, would be, oh boy, sewers are coming. But there's so much more that has to go into the fact that they're going to be implemented. Once again, where's that sewage plant and treatment plant going? Do we have enough land for the effluent to just leach out? So those are large questions that have to be answered. Right. And I guess the, uh, the federal government with the Environmental Protection Agency is probably Well, there's going to be going pain to be also. Think about it. I think there's something like 17,000 cars a day travel Main Street here. Sure, that's going to be tough. But no. Okay. <laughs> so you think there'll be traffic jams? So you, it's, to this, this sewer <laughs> main pipe, go, is, does it go down the Main Street? Is that where I it goes? I would think so. Because that's where they have the land to... Uh, no, that's where they have to hook up to. to the, you got to build... Put the sewer closer to the buildings that are going to hook up, right? Right, so I can't go behind. It's, it's probably going to go, go down the main street. Go down yeah. the main street. But I'm not an engineer, so I don't maybe know what. So I'm then we'll all be here next year. I'll, I'll be interviewing you, complaining about all the traffic on Main Street Absolutely. because of all the aggravation that's, that's for, sure. for the sewers. But they don't.
don't affect me, so why do I care that we have traffic? That's for sure. So there's always uh, unintended consequences. But for the long term, I think you, you, you well, fought you know, for it. Well, you know, I must tell you, um, I think it was Robert Moses. You remember yeah, him? Yeah, right. Famous uh, for parks. everything that he's built, parks in the great state of New York. He once said, you can't make an omelet without cracking an egg. <laughs> and I think that's what people have to understand. Right, right. You can't re reconstruct a road without detours and delays. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we see it on 347 now. I mean, that was driving me crazy, all that traffic. Well, yes, but now course. that it's past my house, <laughs> right. now I'm happy because my traffic's cut, cut back and uh, they did a nice job. And uh, But yeah, for the last uh, year or so, right. that was just a nightmare. I'm Smith, Smith, uh, Main Street's going to be uh, horrific, but I guess for the long term, better. Well, yeah, we have I, to do I this. I do think, and I'm not sure I'm saying this correctly, but the, the sewer systems are no longer the big pipes that you would envision to carry the sewage. Uh, they tell me they can use four-inch pipes now. Wow! To carry because of the flow is so with is flow so fast. and pumping stations. Yeah, whether that's true or not, I'm not aware. Wow. Well, either I was. I'm thinking big three-foot no, pipes are over. that they got to rip up the entire street to get Well, you know, sewer systems in Europe, them. you can walk in the sewers of uh, Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Is there anything else you want to talk about about the when, when it was relating to the uh, to the sewers and the money we got from from the uh, no? But the I government? do want to talk. About, you referenced it earlier on. You know, um, Smithtown is a great town for many reasons. One of the reasons is the fiscal ability that we have to keep the taxes low. Um, and for those taxes people pay, services is wonderful. We have three beaches, 22 parks, uh, planning, uh, all of the things that make a town great, we fund them at not too much of a cost. If you notice the papers this year, this year for 2017, almost every town raised its town taxes. Smithtown, we had a diminished tax. And I would argue we get more than most people get well, maybe. in our town. And the other thing is, we also just obtained a AAA bond rating, which is the highest credit rating uh, a town could get. So I'm very proud of those achievements. Yeah, and I know you you love the town. I you know I see you out at the restaurants. You love our our downtown. You're, yes, you're you're at many uh, events, and you know Smithtown is a is a great town. You know, for the people who are watching this out of the area, you know, I, I I'm always surprised that people more people don't come into Smithtown, whether it's to go to the theater or to go to some of the uh, the restaurants that we have. It's but you but you know you think about it on Friday Saturday night, it's almost impossible to get through town, right? Because all of the restaurants do so well. We're becoming a restaurant town, right? I think once the sewers are implement, implemented, you will see many more restaurants and high-end restaurants. What about what about bars? I mean, Smith. When I grew up, Smithtown had a lot more bars than it does. It seems like more closed, and a lot of bars have moved to uh, other towns, whether it's uh, Patchogue but, but or River. See, uh, is mean, that on purpose? Or? No, I don't think so. Because what you see downtown is called a central business district. Anything is permitted in a central business district. I think that it's a matter of capitalism. If someone thinks he can make money with a bar, then he will try it. And if he doesn't, he fails, and then somebody else will try it. Mm -hmm. We don't say you can't put a bar anywhere. Well, certainly in certain zones you can't, but in the general um, central business district, you can. Right. So you just let it, let it work out. The Smithtown doesn't discourage businesses no. from opening up no. a bar if no. you're within the limits. No. And, well, and the, but, zone properly. But you know, uh, government makes laws, government has to follow the laws. So if the central business permits uh, bars and grills in the central business district, then I think you have to follow that format and not prevent those who want to be a bar. But you know, uh, it's like water seeks its own level. Right. You're not going to open up a hardware store next to another hardware store. Right. Systems. So the, so the cesspools, you do believe, it is a big problem, or the, the lack of a sewer system in the Smithtown. You think that's a big, uh, well, a big yeah, contributing I'll factor? You, I'll give you the perfect example. Perfect example is we have a performing arts theater, which does fairly well. However, he cannot expand. He wants to put in a bar. There are intermissions like in the city where one could go out and get a, a drink. He can't do that because the septic system that's currently there won't absorb the extra sewage. He can't get a permit. Right. And he can't expand the sewage system. But if there were sewers, it would be a home run for him in particular. Right. 
So what, what about traffic? Let's talk about traffic. I mean, you, you talk about it all the time, I'm sure. Every time you run for office, people get up at the meetings and say, we can't stand the traffic in Smithtown. Well, traffic <laughs> is beyond the control of the town. You realize that the main street in Smithtown is two state roads and a local road called Main Street. Traffic funnels off Northern State and Long Island Expressway for people to bypass the traffic. And so they come through downtown Smithtown. It's an awful heavily traveled road, but I think that's owing to the fact that it is a state road or actually two ways. Route 25, Route 25A, two state roads. No, but what we're ta they're talking about building some more apartment buildings uh, in town, in Smithtown. I believe they're talking about maybe the school, uh, converting that into apartments. But doesn't that just bring more and other 50, 100 cars well, that are going to be traveling every day? Well, when you talk about apartments or condominiums on a main street near a railroad station, it doesn't mean that there will be cars, that those people will have cars. Right. Their uh, transportation needs are right in front of them. And so it's a... I mean, it's a balancing act. I'm sure you have to well, decide we, we get the tax revenue. I think it's been demonstrated in other communities that if uh, housing is built near railroad stations, then the traffic is diminished. Right. And, and so going forward, as far as uh, technology and things like that, do you think Smithtown is... Are we, are we progressive? I mean, I, I look at Smithtown as we're more of a natural... You know, we have a lot of parks, more than I think most places. We just, to me, the town is beautiful. We're not overbuilt. Uh, we're not over-commercialized. We seem to be a little bit more conservative when it comes to putting in, uh, you know, big box stores and, and things well, like that. The, is that the, a conscious effort? Yeah, it is. But it's, uh, it's owing to the planners that we've had and have. Somebody came up with the concept many years ago that big box stores should go in the, in the industrial area. So if you notice, um, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Walmart, they're all in an area that was previously zoned industrial. So they're in one location, much like the car dealerships. I know the town has their car dealerships in one location as Smith Town does. Right. And that's owing to the good planning. Right. That, that's interesting. Um, I just before we move on, I just want to ask about the the drug issue because that's always you know that's something that's very important to uh, to residents. And I, I remember uh, and my kids went to the schools here, and the people used to call uh, uh, the Smithtown High School heroin high. Yeah, which was interesting. My kids, uh, you know, when I asked them, they they didn't know people who were dealing drugs. But obviously, there is there are drugs as there are everywhere. Is there anything we can do on a town level, or that we are doing on a town level? to prevent them. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see drug dealers when I go down Main Street. I don't see homeless people. Well, I don't see but beggars, let but me they're say here. This. It's clear that the um, heroin abuse is throughout the country, and um, every city, every town has it. Um, I think the answer to that is uh, education, better education for the young people uh, to prove how dangerous it is using the drugs. The town cannot, we do have a wonderful youth bureau, so we attempt to do that through our youth bureau. We also run something called Horizons, which is for uh, rehabilitation, if you will, but that's a service we provide, so uh, that's about, I think, all the town can do. You think the rest is a state level or, or county yeah, policing? Well, I think higher government, see, uh, look, town government is the lowest form of government. Now, forget a village, but let's talk about a town. Lowest form of government. We don't have the wherewithal to do all those things that a state or a county can do. Uh, just before we wrap it up, one last question. Every time an election comes around, people say, is the supervisor going to run again? You're certainly not doing this because at this point, I don't think you need the money. You've been in doing it for so <laughs> long. You know, I mean, you have to enjoy doing it. What, what, what drives you to, to keep running? You could be in Florida right now having a great time with your wife. And, you know, well, what, what drives you to keep doing well, this? I really, truly believe in public service. I've been doing it since I left the Army. And so, as long as I'm able and uh, my brain still works well enough to do it, I will continue in public service. When people ask me if I run, I'm running again, I don't answer because I've never done that. I have never indicated prior to a run that I was seeking the office again. I just wait for things to unfold, and if the people want me, I'll run. If they don't, I won't.
Great. Supervisor, thank you very much for, you. for coming here, and I wish you the best luck. And again, I'm honored to get to know you over the, over the past few years. And, uh, and, uh, and as I said at the beginning of the show, you know, we talk about politics. You know, there's, there are, of course, po party politics, and we're known as a Republican town. But what I've seen from you is you always reach, reach across the aisle. You don't, I wouldn't even know by talking to you what party you're in because you treat the Democrats, the independents, Tea Party, everybody. You really treat them all with fairness. With government, you don't bash some of our, our leaders who are, the, are a different party than you. You've endorsed some. Well, let me say this. The, the less politics in government, any government, the better the government. That's the way I look at it. All right, that's very good. Thank you very much, Thank Supervisor Vecchio. Please follow us on uh, Facebook, like our page, and share it if you like it. Long Island Backstory. Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs is uncovering the truth on Long Island. The family court system. Red light cameras. Corruption in local politics. The heroin epidemic. Corrupt judges. At Long Island Backstory, we uncover the truth that the Cablevision news monopoly won't dare touch. We uncover the details you won't see on News 12 or in Newsday. We are local independent media at its best. Long Island Backstory, available on Public Access TV and on YouTube.